What's up, guys? Hope everybody's having a fantastic day. Wanted to make this quick video so I can address a couple of things uh, with regards to indoor air quality. You see, this is a subject that comes up time and time again. Every time that we do um, mold remediation in someone's property, the very next question is, well, what do we do now with regards to our indoor air quality? Like, how do we make sure that we keep the mold spores down? Um, it, God forbid if that there's ever a moisture issue. How do we kind of mitigate that and just overall indoor air quality? So um, today I wanted to go ahead and make this quick video um, to give you a, a couple of different options because most of us who own a home have had someone recommend a UV light uh, for our air handling units, right? Um, so today, um, what I'm going to talk about is exactly why I'm not too keen on UV lights, or at least not UV as a standalone air filtration uh, type of system or air purification type of system. So just jumping right into this real quick, most people who have an air handling unit, right, their AC tech will usually recommend a UV light that they plug right into the the air handling unit or, or the furnace box, depending on what, uh, what part of the United States you're in. And essentially what this light does or what it's supposed to do, it's essentially supposed to sanitize whatever the light touches inside of the air handling unit. Typically these, these UV lights, right, which are essentially a long bulb, um, are usually placed right above the coils or right below the coils. So that way, that don't, that general surface area is pretty sanitized, right? So the, the reality here is, is that I think in a lab setting or in a very perfect style setting, um, their UV lights are actually really effective, right? The problem is, is once you get into real world practice, there's a couple of flaws with the overall technology and more importantly, how it affects the end result of the air that you're actually breathing. So number one, let's talk about what UV lights can do. So if you can picture a light bulb, right, or a flashlight, essentially the, the strongest source um, of power, if you will, is going to be right at the source. Essentially, wherever the light starts, that's where that power, right, to sanitize, to disinfect, to do its magic is going to be the closest to the bulb. Now, as you get further away from the light source, you're going to have less and less overall effect. So that's number one. Number two is that only works. A UV light only works in a situation where every single nook and cranny is getting access or is getting touched by that UV light. In other words, if you have any areas that have shadowing, you still have the possibility for microbial growth inside of the air handling unit, right? So typically because the these UV lights are placed inside of a coil, that means that typically in the blower, and I'm not saying that all the time, but typically inside of the blower, which is the actual fan, what's moving the air through the ducts and out through the AC vents, you're not getting any true sanitization there, right? So there's still some areas inside of the furnace box or the air handling unit box that still could present some potential issues. But let's take it a step further, right? Think about the rate at or the speed, the velocity in which the air actually moves through the HVA system and through the ducts. I mean, it's pretty darn fast. Depending on the unit that you have, depending on how many tons uh, your AC unit is, um, that could range low end anywhere from you know 500 feet per minute um, all the way up to 1,500, 2,000 feet per minute. Most homes will probably be closer to the range of 700, 800, depending on the AC tech that you talk to and what your uh, specific uh, needs are for the home and for its cooling needs. But either way, think about a microscopic mold spore, right? 0.03 microns. I mean, this thing is tiny. So essentially, you've got a little mold spore in a huge universe of the HVAC system, this, this furnace box. If you're traveling at 500 to 1,000 um, you know, feet per minute, linear feet per minute through that AC, and you've got a UV light that is supposed to zap that mold spore, 
there's a pretty good possibility that some of these mold spores are going to get right through your fil filter, especially if you don't have a uh, good filter, which by the way, I made a video about, you know, what kind of filtration you should get for um, your home AC. If you haven't checked that out, go ahead and look on our page. There's definitely going to be a link somewhere around there. But more importantly, if you don't have a good filter, what you're going to notice is, is that mold spore is going to go right through the filter. It's going to get sucked in through the coils and right past the blower, right back into the duct system. And essentially, eventually, you're going to start breathing that stuff in. The reason is it's moving so fast that the UV light may not necessarily have enough time to zap that mold spore, for lack of a better word, and just basically break up its DNA, right? So what do you do then, right? UV lights are pretty useful considering what they're meant to do. In other words, shine light for extended periods of time on a surface to keep them sanitized. So what I recommend for my clients is a very specific type of technology that uses a combination of technologies, which yes, does include UV technology, but then it also includes things like ionization right? Um, it also includes, um, you know, technologies that essentially um, activate the oxygen in the air, which leads me to another major point. When this air, if you have just only a UV light, when this air passes through the, past the light and through the rest of the ductwork, and by the time that it comes out of your AC vent, that air is just plain old simple air. I mean, it's, it's not, it's inactive air. It's not really doing anything for the indoor air quality. It's not cleaning anything. It's not sanitizing anything. So if you're a person who has a lot of allergies or, you know, there's pathogens or mold spores or, or even awkward odors in, in the property for, you know, several reasons, whether it's food or pets, what have you, essentially that UV light isn't really contributing anything with that regard. So by having something that, you know, that not only uses UV technology, but also um, is an ionizer, as well as uses activated oxygen, all of these factors now come into play to where once that air comes out of the AC vent, your air is actually charged. So if there are mold spores or allergens or pathogens or even odors in the house, what this technology is going to do because your air now inside of the house is essentially mimicking what nature does outside. It's actually killing the mold spores that are in the air. It's causing these, all these different molecules to basically bond together and do one of two things. Number one, either drop to the floor for later cleaning or get sucked into the AC filter. And because now all of these molecules bonded together, there's a very, very good likelihood that it's gonna get stuck in that filter, which essentially is why you have a filter in the first place, right? So at any rate, if indoor air quality is something that you really care about, or you want to get some more information about it, or you want to find out, you know, what kind of uh, devices I recommend and where you can go ahead and get that, um, do one of two things. Number one, go onto our website, ecotechpro.com, or just go ahead and shoot us a call. Phone number is going to be in the description here. At any, at any rate, got to run. Hope that, that this video helps. And if you got any questions, like I said, definitely go to ecotechpro.com or just shoot us a call. Thank <laughs> you.